Janik Journal coming back at you guys. Uh, subject of the day today, chain tensioner on the doodle bug. This is something I've been meaning to get to for a long time on this bike. Uh, the chain is way too loose. Uh, it kind of works, but it's only going to get looser over time. I had some, some kind of chain tensioner set up. Didn't work well. Uh, I have the motor in a fixed position. It's not on slots or anything. So I have to uh, fabricate something. This is from uh, EC Distributing. Got another sprocket. All the materials here. Looks like I got everything I need, everything I already had kicking around in the garage, luckily. So for now, the plan is to have the uh, sprocket somewhere up here. I'll probably take a link, a few links out of this chain, or I'm sorry, add a few links to this chain. Um, so it'll actually be up higher than, than it is now. And then I'll have, a, have it on some kind of pivot um, welded probably to the bottom of the frame here. So I'm thinking maybe like a three inch pivot. And I'm still not sure if I'm going to do a spring or like a jacking bolt setup. I prefer to do a jacking bolt, but I might try the spring first. I think the easiest way for me to show you guys, I'm just going to start cutting pieces up. Uh, it's easier to just cut them up, get them into small pieces, and then show you what the plan is instead of going into too much detail. So, uh, see you after that. see it's starting to come together now. I got that piece of tubing with the uh, bronze bushings hammered in there. Um, this is going to be the pivot and then here's obviously the idler and it's going to swing on the pivot. Um, just kind of estimating a three inch swing is close to what I want. Um, this piece here is it's you know it's hollow tubing. It's about five ace OD and then three ace ID so it'll pick up this bolt which is going to bolt the uh, idler on. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece up, this square tubing, and um, see what it's looking like. Right, about set up to start some tacking here. Let me show you what I got going on. This is probably going to be the hardest part to keep these things, you know, nice and square. Uh, I got a bunch of magnets. I don't know. I'll tack it. I'll see what it does. Hopefully it doesn't move around too much. ended up uh, this piece is all welded up um, that's going to be the pivot and this is where the idler is going to go it's going to go on the inside of it um, what you really have to keep in mind here is that these two this and that you want to keep them parallel so that you know when it when it actually pivots it's actually tracking tracking straight so I did as, as much as I could uh, to ensure that they're as, as parallel as they can be this is too long so what I'm going to do is weld it and uh, cut it up after the longer it is I figure the better uh, chance it have of me making sure it's parallel. So uh, go ahead and tack it and see if it stays remotely close to where it is now. Let the garage air out a little bit. That that last bushing I, I uh, welded must have had a lot of oil in it. I think it was flaming up, smoking everywhere. Let me show you what I got. Uh, it's all right. It, it's it could be a little more square, but I think they're they're pretty good in parallel, which is the most important thing. So I'm gonna take the angle grinder, uh, cut the excess off of that, and uh, you know I'll bolt up the uh, idler and see what it looks like mocked up. All right, so this is pretty much it. I got the idler on, got the pivot point on with the bushings and everything. Uh, the next step is probably going to be the hardest, which is going to be welding it to the frame. So it's going to be something like this. It's going to sit in there, you know, and be able to pivot up and down like that. Um, and again, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a spring, a spring or a jacking bolt type setup. A spring tensioner is going to be a lot easier to set up, but the problem with a spring tensioner is this. Uh, normally when you're riding, this is the tight side of the chain, that's the slack side of the chain. So you're always going to put the idler on the slack side. Um, however, when you decelerate, 
and you know this engine has more compression than than stock um, so it's going to have a lot more engine braking um, but when you decelerate this is going to become the slack side and this is going to become the taut side so under deceleration with a spring it's going to want to loosen this up or i'm sorry tighten this side up and then your top's going to be going to be floating around on deceleration um not sure i'm really into that in any case, the next step though is uh, to attach the idler to the frame. Uh, as opposed to just welding welding the tube to tube, you know, you're not going to have real good contact. It's going to be hard to line up. Uh, I'm going to use this piece of uh, three, three quarter square tube and i uh, got my hole saw, which should be about the same diameter as this tube here. And uh, I'm going to put it in the mill, not use any, any bit or anything, and drill it kind of offset, something like that, to, uh, to cradle it more. So. Let's go get this set up in the mill. So we got pieces cut out, ground, nice and ready to go. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just weld a little bit. I'm just going to probably put a little bead here on both sides. Uh, you can't weld too much with the bronze bushings. They're, they're grease impregnated and uh, you'll just cook all the grease out of them. So I'm just going to, uh, what I'm actually doing is welding it just enough so that I can punch this, this uh, bushing out. I don't really have a way to do it. I tried tried grabbing on it in a vise and it just slid. So I'm just going to weld just enough and then I'll be able to, to hit the rest out. And then um, after I hit the, hit the bronze out, I'll weld it all the way, put all the heat to it. All right, we're all welded up. Um, now I got to let that cool down press the bushings back in so I can continue to mock it up and actually uh, tack it to the frame. And um, then I'll have to push them out again to fully weld it onto the frame. All right, we're going for it here. Uh, I'm basically just kind of eyeballing it for now, tacking it, planning on seeing how it looks. And if I got to take it off and re-tack it, I'll just keep doing that until it looks pretty good. Well, I kind of didn't do what I said. I uh, pretty much just welded that whole side. I uh, definitely melted some of the grease out, but that's all right. I'll, I'll try repacking them if I have to. Um, but I still got to weld the other side, so I'm going to end up taking the motor out, the wheel off, all that stuff. Uh, you can see some old, this was an old attempt at a chain tensioner here. I got that weld to grind off up here too, up here. So, you know, I got to take all the wheel, everything out uh, so I can get in there, grind it, and then clean up the rest of the paint. Um, I had a chain guard here. I had all, all sorts of things that kind of didn't work out. So, um, yep, but it, uh, it's pretty well on straight, so I didn't want to risk it. I just kind of went for the weld since I had it positioned how I wanted it. And, you know, if I cook the bearing a little bit, I'll deal with that after, I guess. So this is where we ended up. I spared you guys the details of uh, taking everything apart, cleaned up some welds, things like that. But um, as for the tensioner, I'm going to go Heim joint route. Had to fill in some holes over here, uh, welded some more weld on the brake bracket. Looks pretty nasty. But yeah, so this is the two Heim joints. I just got a male and a female, 3 ace Heim joint. And um, basically I'm just going to weld it up here. I already cleaned the frame. Just pretty much weld. I got a piece of 3 ace tubing. That'll work for my bolt, and um, you can pretty much see what's going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and weld that in place. And uh, basically we're done, aside from paint. That's all welded up now. Um, just show you quickly how you can do the adjustment. I'm sure you guys already figured it out. Just take that nut off here, this bolt, and then you, know, you unwind this, and that's going to put the sprocket down. 
Um, the chain's actually going to ride on top of it, so if you put the sprocket down, it's actually going to take some tension off. Um, I got a, a jam nut on there to lock it up after the adjustment's made. And then basically just tighten this on. So you should be able to make a good adjustment in, um, I don't know, probably 30 seconds or less. So that's pretty much it, all set. Uh, I got a few more things to do on this bike before I'm ready to put it back together. Um, one of which is I gotta get it painted. Um, a whole bunch of black overspray. Actually, it's not up here, it's more in the front. A lot of black overspray got on it somehow. So I gotta sand that all down and give it a, give it a quick respray. Also gotta do something about this seat here. Use that high density foam, which is way too soft. You just sink right to the bottom. We're gonna glue up uh, some carpet padding, get a couple layers of that going. Should be pretty good. But um, that's going to do it for this video. Those updates will be coming up uh, that I just mentioned. Uh, they'll be coming up pretty soon. Hopefully in the next few weeks I'll have them uh, all done. So uh, check you guys later. Um, go ahead and subscribe if you're into it. Uh, leave us a thumbs up. That helps us out too. Um, but anyways, thank you all for watching. See you guys next time.